the reason that it's so hard to change and why we can literally be addicted to the pain and suffering that we've been through so much that we don't actually move forward. And every time we seem to move forward, we fall four, five, six steps back is because the pain is more comfortable than the change that we don't know. In those moments when I have truly expressed a faithful attitude towards my situation, that is when oftentimes the answers come because that is opening the door to the unknown. It's opening the door to God. Okay, today I want to talk about change, the fear of change, and finding your why, because I think these two ideas are very much connected, and understanding them helps us to stay on track and understand why we fall off track if that happens to be the case. And I've been thinking a lot more about these ideas since last week when I shared a video about, you know, just a real struggle day that I was having. It happens to, to all of us. And I wanted to share that video last week because I want to keep it as real as possible. Like there are days where I don't feel 100% you know, super happy. There are days that I just feel down about life and, and I want to let you guys know that because life is hard sometimes and making choices and changing your life is hard. And I don't think that we talk about that enough sometimes. And so this is almost like a part two to that video, but I just wanted to go a little bit deeper and have it be in more of a positive light, a solution oriented light. Um, because I've been thinking more and more about it since I published that video about why I was feeling that way. And if anyone else out there is having trouble sticking to your plan and you, you feel like you're sort of in this self-sabotage loop where you make progress, but then you fall into old habits or you fall off the wagon really easy, even though you feel like you have a really good reason, like a solid why that you are, are that's behind you for making these changes. And there's a reason why behavior change is such an interesting topic and something that a lot of people cover in the personal development world and, and the health space as well, because we know cognitively what we need to do. There's information out there for days. We can go find out the technical answers to everything that we need to know and we can start experimenting and tweaking things and and improving and figuring out exactly what path is going to work for us right for really whatever change you want to make whether it's a health change a financial change a relationship change any of these things anything that you can set a goal for so the problem is not that we don't know what to do or we don't have the resources to tell us at least a, a place to start as far as what to do to change the situation that we're in. But it's the implementation of that change. It's the change in behavior. It's the change in mindset. It's the change in habit. And the example that I'm using from myself from last week that I posted was an example of a time that was real for me that I experience every once in a while where I just kind of lose connection with the things that have driven me to the place that I am. I lose connection with the pain that I used to have and how that used to rule my life. My digestion essentially decided for me um, a lot of, of how I was going to feel every day and also what I did socially and what I was able to um, have the energy and the stamina to do in my life. And now that that's gone, sometimes I do take that for granted. And I forget how bad it really was. And so sometimes that's the first thing to do, right? Is to remember where you came from and remember how bad things really were and how bad you really felt. But even that might not be enough sometimes because you're not really experiencing it now. And I'm not experiencing that now. Like I have digestive upsets from time to time, but it is nothing like the daily experience that I used to have before I came to you know, very low carb and essentially carnivore was when I had the shift in my health. And so then you're kind of stuck with this thing, right? Where you're going, okay, I, I know where I came from. I don't want to go back there. 
and I know exactly what I need to do to stay on plan, right? At least right now until I learn new information, then I can implement something new. It's not that I don't have the roadmap. It's that I keep taking these pit stops, right? When that's not really my intention. And so I want to discuss a few of the other things that can be at play here when we're looking at behavior change and our habits and this kind of self-sabotage loop and just going back to old behaviors that intentionally or as part of our why we don't want to have anymore but you, you might still be struggling with that and i still struggle with that sometimes too so before we jump into the points that i want to discuss today i just want to throw out this kind of blanket over the over the top of everything that some of these things might be difficult to hear at first i know they have been for me in the times in my life when i've sat and asked myself these questions they're they're very uh, self-honest questions, right? You have to be willing to truly be honest with yourself. And that's why journaling the answers to these questions is preferable because it gives you a space to be vulnerable and then you can tear it up and throw it away and nobody ever has to read it, right? But if you can go through these and be truly, brutally honest with yourself about how you feel and what's really happening, this is where you can really unlock some of these blocks that you're having. And I continually work with these myself when I feel like I'm coming up against a roadblock like I was last week and going, what is really at the root of this? You know, what is, what is this belief that I have or this um, opinion of myself that I have that I'm still holding on to that maybe is time to let go or just examine in some way and see if it's really something I want to hold on to or not. So the first thing to ask yourself is do I actually really want to change? Is this something I really want? Or really underneath, is this something that I just think I should do? Or I'm kind of doing it because everybody else is doing it or because a bunch of other people told me that I should do it or that it works. Is this something that you really actually want? And this is an interesting question. It can be in the form of like, well, I should do this, right, for my health, but you don't really want it. Like quitting anything that you're kind of addicted to is a good example, whether it's smoking, alcohol, coffee, anything, you know, media addiction, anything like that. You know, we kind of all know, again, in our minds, like, hey, I shouldn't consume this or I shouldn't be consuming this in excess like I am. But underneath, you don't really want to quit, so the should part of that, I know that it that I should do that. I know that it's probably the best thing for me. That sort of takes the mask of the why, right? And it's not really you that wants it underneath. You're thinking, well, I should do this. This is the best thing for me. And that might be true. But if you're reflecting on this and realizing how much change that's going to bring to your lifestyle and your your future potentially, and that isn't sounding like in the moment something that you really want, that could be the block that's underneath the falling off the wagon or going back to old habits or something like in that self-sabotage type of loop that's so frustrating to experience because it seems like it's unconscious, right? There's this unconscious part of us that is driving this behavior, the behavior that we know in our heads we don't want, but somehow it keeps happening. And so that might be one of the roots of this. The second point to consider and write about is maybe you don't know what you want, to be honest. Maybe you haven't really drawn out a clear vision of what the healthiest you looks like. Maybe you really haven't given enough time to consider what that life would be like. And I think this is one of the areas that I was stuck in last week. And I've been thinking about more is that, yes, I do my self hypnosis. And yes, I do my affirmations pretty regularly. And yes, I do all these practices. But visualizing is actually kind of hard for me. And so what I haven't actually really done, I realized last week, is sat down and kind of formed this picture of what I would look like, what I would feel like, what I would be thinking, what I would be doing, my habits, my routines for the day in this state of, of revitalized and revivified health that I am 
pursuing. It's easy to get discouraged and sort of drugged down by the tasks of everyday life and sometimes the sacrifices that you have to give up by eating this way when you're not feeling in amazing health, right? And that's kind of how I was feeling last week. I was not getting enough sleep. I was just still feeling like my macros aren't right. I was feeling like my skin was flaring up and being itchy and I was felt like I was doing everything right, but yet I was still struggling, you know? And so without being able to tap into that picture of myself in my mind very easily, you know, I allowed those things to get me down. And so that is something to think about. Maybe you don't really know what you want in the sense that you haven't taken enough time to really create this vision of who it is that you would be if you were in the place that you're striving to be. And spending time meditating on that or writing it out, describing it almost like in a story you can do, like there's all different ways that people do this, that can be really helpful. So what I've started doing is spending about 10 minutes in the morning before I wake up to just try to form that mental image and, you know, say things to myself like, you know, when I take care of my body, my body takes care of me. That's my favorite one right now. And that's just setting me up to say, okay, the more I stick with these habits that I know are best for me, that I know I should be doing, the more benefits I'm going to see and the closer I'm going to get to being this vision of myself that is healthy and energetic and vibrant and playful and fun and still spontaneous and finds ways to have that fun, you know, spontaneous joy in my life without it having to be around food. All those things can start to fall underneath as bullet points of that affirmation. The next point is very important. And I've discussed this a little bit in the past, in some of my past videos, but this is having an attachment to your problem or to your illness or to your sickness or to your weight or to whatever it is that you're actually trying to get away from in pursuing better health. And this is a tricky one, right? Because you might say, well, of course, I'm not attached to it. I want to be as far away from that as possible. I don't want to weigh this much anymore. I don't want to suffer from these chronic diseases anymore. I don't want to feel this tired and crabby and blah all over the place anymore. Which on the one hand, like we talked about, can be a good reminder and a good motivator sometimes to remember where you came from and how much it sucked. And that can be a way to kind of fortify that why that you have. But if we dwell too much on the past or think about that in terms of, well, this is my identity still, that's where it gets a little bit murky, right? And that's where it can influence the behaviors that we do and how well we're able to stick to what we know we should do in pursuit of the ultimate goal, which is our best health. And the last point that I want to discuss is kind of along these same lines, but it's a little bit of a different question to ask, and it can reveal some different answers. And that is that potentially whether it's in your mindset or in your lifestyle or, or, you know, pertaining to whatever goal it is, you're benefiting from having this problem in some way. So it's not just that you're attached kind of in your mindset or in, you know, in your thought processes to your past, let's say, like we talked about in the previous point, but it's almost like it's providing some sort of benefit to you in your daily life. And that is why it's so hard to change. In a health context, this is probably most commonly recognized as, you know, eating carbs and, and drinking caffeine and things like that is a quick energy boost, right? And so if you're feeling tired and maybe you haven't had the best night's sleep or something else in your lifestyle is a little bit off, using those things, right, provides that quick benefit that we know it's not what we want in the long term, right? And we know by eating this stuff or drinking too much caffeine, I'm kind of putting myself three, four, five steps back, right? Because I'm going to have to recover from that, get back into, you know, ketosis or feeling like I'm not having a blood sugar issue. Maybe I'm not going to sleep as well again tonight now because of the caffeine I've consumed. But in the moment when we're feeling low or discouraged or desperate to like get something done, these old things come back in, right? If they haven't been replaced with other habits or other solutions that can meet that need 
in those times when we're feeling weak or we're devoid of willpower. And of course, you can go much deeper with this one, right? You could look at deeper reasons why you feel like you're benefiting from being sick. I've had to think about this myself. How does the idea of continually reinforcing that I'm sick just make me feel comfortable? A lot of times this, these things are just about staying within what's comfortable. And if I had to summarize all of these, I think four points that we've gone through, that's what it would be is that the reason that it's so hard to change and why we can literally be addicted to the pain and suffering that we've been through so much that we don't actually move forward. And every time we seem to move forward, we fall four, five, six steps back is because the pain is more comfortable. It's a more secure place to be than the change that we don't know. Have you ever heard the saying, you know, stick with the devil you know versus the devil you don't know or something like that? It's like, well, I know what to expect from the state that I'm in right now. And I could risk it and put it all on the line and change my behavior in the hopes that I might get better or I might experience a different outcome. But if we haven't even really had a taste of that outcome yet, oftentimes, because we are human beings and we seek fundamentally first level of, of need in our, our behavior and our psyche is to feel safe and secure and like, you know, we're not in danger. And so oftentimes change feels like danger. It feels like not being safe, right? It's the unknown. We don't know for sure what the result is going to be. And so, so often it feels more safe and secure to stay where we are, even though we're suffering, even though it makes us feel miserable. And then we kind of work ourselves up to this point again, where we've had enough, you hit a breaking point, you say, tomorrow I'm starting over or today I'm starting over enough with this. But if you, but if we don't go in deep enough asking these questions and really figuring out why I want to change, it's very possible that we just repeat this cycle over and over again, hitting a breaking point. Oh, I'm going to change everything. I'm, I'm done. Right. I've had enough, but then we just go end up going right back into it. And again, this isn't just in a health context. You can see this in relationships with money, with career, like with anything that you can set a goal for. So what do we do, right? What do you do if you feel like this is me right now? Like this is what I'm going through. And I did last week and every once in a while I do. And I've talked about that in the past where, yes, I have a why. I have several you know, why is that that very much do drive me. But at the end of the day, there are still times when it's hard to even stay connected to that, right? Because we don't know what the future holds, especially when you're feeling like you're not making progress in the moment. And well, what the heck, I should just go back to the things that I was doing. And so that is where, for me, the idea of faith comes in. And faith is the evidence of things unseen. It's the evidence of what's unknown. It's something that's intangible that you can't even really put a why into, right? It's kind of like, it's just something that when people say you take a leap of faith, you're, you're literally leaping off the edge of something into the unknown and letting go of all control of what happens next. And that is the ultimate surrender, right? That's the ultimate expression of, I don't know, <laughs> you know, and there's no way that I can know. And so what do I do about that? I just continue to do the things that I think are best and have faith that things are going to happen the way that they're supposed to happen. And that's very abstract and very almost opposite to having a very tethered why that you hold on to. And so what I'm learning to do is have both, right? I have my whys. I have three or four that I think about from time to time. It's like, this is why I'm doing this. And they are very motivating and they do keep me on track a lot of the time. 
but on those days where you know it's just like you can't i can't be bothered with anything right i'm just feeling down for whatever reason and i'm tempted to throw in the towel and just say you know not completely but you know what i mean have a cheat day or do something that i know is not the healthiest thing for me at this moment in time that's when i'm learning to rely on faith the abstract intangible essence of surrender and at the same time it is the most open you can possibly be and i find that in those moments when i have truly expressed a faithful attitude towards my situation letting go of control stopping trying to figure everything out to understand everything fully that is when oftentimes the answers come because that is opening the door to the unknown it's opening the door to god it's opening the door to the higher power that goes beyond our understanding right that makes things move in ways that we just don't understand and that's what's going on in the human body in my opinion it's i mean it is this thing that we know so much about but yet we still don't understand how it all how it all does it and we we still don't know everything about the human body and so that is the message that i wanted to share with you and i hope that that is a helpful solution or something at least something to think about moving forward because this is hard you know this is hard and to say that it's not hard and it's always easy and every single day is is just goes swimmingly for everybody i think is probably not true at least it's not in my experience let me know below what you think about this discussion what you think about faith what you think about all of this and i will see you soon for another video take care